أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم أما بعد رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأهل الأمة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما So this is an online course on the subject of Ibrahim alayhi salam's dream and the onslaught of Gog and Magog. We've reached the section of we're studying the onslaught of Gog and Magog and we divided this this subject into three parts: crusades, colonialism and the so-called war on terror. We use this as a profile for us to understand the march of Gog and Magog through history, their rampage through history. They come in waves. The first one was Crusades, where, while the Khilafah was there. Colonialism led to the uh, eventual abolishment of Khilafah. And now we're going to study the third wave of Gog and Magog, which is... The war on Islam, war on Muslim nations under the pretext of defending democracy or fighting terror. Now, major events that took place during this third wave of attacks from Gog and Magog was the reshaping of Europe into European Union, rise of the United States as the global superpower. So power shifted from Europe, from England to uh, the United States and the discovery of oil in the Middle East, which actually proved to be very dangerous for the Middle East, very much in conformity with uh, the dream of the Prophet ﷺ when he said that destruction is upon the Arabs. And then there's another hadith that says gold would be discovered in uh, the Euphrates. Okay, so US, the US dollar then loses its gold standard and becomes fiat floating currency in 1933. Now, this had significant uh, impact on global affairs. So, gold standard means when a currency is backed by an amount of gold. So, when you remove that gold standard, what you have is just paper and then there are people who give it value. One piece of paper can have the value of 10 bucks. Another can have the value of 1,000. So the one who controls the value actually becomes rich. So the inequality, economic inequality that we see in the world is not because a particular nation works hard or is efficient and the other one is not. The global economic system has been built by Gog and Magog in such a way that it is intrinsically oppressive. And it is what we call legalized theft. It is actually designed in such a way to keep nations poor and to make the people who control these systems richer. Okay, moving on then. The petrodollar is created. Now, what is the petrodollar? The petrodollar is that any sale of oil, especially in the Middle East, will be done using the US dollar. So when you remove the gold backing, the gold standard, how do you stabilize this currency? Because, because fiat and this floating currency will eventually lead to what is called runaway in, uh, inflation. So because it's not measured by any amount of gold, people are just printing money and using just paper, it does lead to hyperinflation, runaway inflation in many cases. So what was done was that how do you stabilize, how do you give value to the US dollar is when there is demand for the US dollar and the demand will be such that anybody who wants to buy Middle Eastern oil will have to buy it using the US dollar. So political and economic control of Muslim lands then becomes necessary for the US. So you have to have control over this oil, the territories that are producing this oil, if the US economy has to be sustained. And the sustenance of the US economy means US hegemony or the Gog and Magog hegemony over the world. So security of Israel also from neighboring Muslim countries is of strategic importance. So all of these factors are adding up and all of these factors are going to have really grim consequences for the Muslim world and this is the overall plan. This is how we can recognize the characteristics of Gog and Magog, the characteristics of Fasad. Quran, uh, in, in the Quran it is clearly written that Gog and Magog 
commit fasad. Fasad is corruption. We're going to uh, read on that in a moment. Okay. So, keeping all of these factors in mind, what would Gog and Magog do when so much is at stake? So you have the security of Israel, you have your economy to stabilize, you have the gold, uh, the, the black gold being discovered, meaning the oil in the Middle East. So much is adding up and you need power over the entire world. The Middle East was actually called the chessboard of uh, global geopolitics. So whoever controls the Middle East actually controls the entire world world and what would the Gog and Magog do in such a situation? The Quran, the answer from the Quran would be fasad, of course, which is corruption, defilement, violence, treachery, destruction, every sort of evil that you can imagine. Okay, so how does that uh, actualize in our current situation? You would have false flag attacks, which is somebody attacks someone so let's say a attacks b but blames it on c that's a false flag attack propaganda and psychological warfare against islam through mainstream media so bbc and cnn and their narrative of islam how islam is a radical religion how muslims are radicalized how this how that how backward and all of this turning people's minds against Islam. And most of Islamophobia essentially comes from this. So misuse of authority in the United Nations. So before this, we did understand how the building and the establishment of global institutions was a must. The fact that you want hegemony over the entire world, you have to establish global institutions. And not only that, you have to make sure you are in control of those institutions. You're the one who's making the big decisions. And that's what we see with the United States being uh, a member of the Security Council of uh, the United Nations. The result is then wars and proxy wars in the Middle East. So, for example, Afghanistan was a full-out war. Iraq was a full-on war. Toppling of governments and funding violence in uh, Muslim countries. So all of this is under agenda. Of course, the media has a role to play. How this country's leader is so oppressive, is a dictator, needs to go. We need to establish democracy and then starting up proxy wars. And Millions are killed in this process. They're displaced, they're starving, and they are exploited. This is Gog and Magog for you. The domino effect of all of this, of course, is the economic collapse in Muslim countries that are affected by war and uh, you know terrorism and all of these, and deprivation, of course. Muslim nations are coerced into taking big loans from the International Monetary Fund, IMF, and the World Bank. So it's like a cycle, a vicious cycle. Wars, propaganda, economic um, you know, uh, collapse and then taking loans, then again a cycle of poverty, impoverishment, debt, and so on and so forth. Loss of currency value. So basically, when your economy collapses, your currency value also will go down. The labor in your country, the, the value of the human resource that you would have in your country becomes cheap. That leads to modern slavery. So, in the case of Indonesia, why are all the big brands making their products in Indonesia? Because it's cheap for them. So why is uh, the labor in Indonesia, a country like Indonesia, cheap? Because their currency value is less. And so for people in uh, the United States, for example, or Europe, it's very easy to have their products made in Indonesia. And this has been intentionally done. So that Muslim countries, some of them, and some non-Muslim countries throughout Africa, even South America, are there to serve as modern slaves to the system of Gog and Magog. Okay, so loss of currency value, cheap labor, modern slavery, and human na and natural resource exploitation. So this will inevitably lead to exploitation of resources as well as human beings then a chain reaction. 
So the necessary consequence of the economic collapse and uh, the deprivation, never-ending wars, is that you're going to have a huge Muslim diaspora in the West. People, they're going to be economic immigrants from Muslim countries going towards the West for a better life that they see. So what that would result in and has done so far is a further integration, assimilation of Muslims into the Western secular way of life and their ideologies. So now we're in the stage where it's everywhere. It's not just in the Western world, even in Muslim countries. The culture, the monoculture that has been established throughout the world is everywhere. But, but one could say that living in the West may just make the process of this integration into the secular way of life very easy and pretty fast. And ideologies as well, so materialism, secularism, one goes to colleges, universities, and the way science is taught, the way other subjects, humanities are taught, those are taught with ideologies that are completely opposed to the Islamic view on the natural world, on the physical world, on law, on ethics, on economics. So all of that is adding up to uh, this in intellectual re-engineering of Muslims. So this actually is a result, this building of this Ahlu Yajuj Majuj, the clones of Yajuj and Majuj, this monoculture, the global civilization that we have, is leads to a gradual corrosion of the Islamic values and a spiritual way of life through media, fashion, trends, Hollywood, whatever. Okay, so now an important question is, we have to make sure we confirm this idea, this interpretation throughout. And how do you confirm this identification of Gog and Magog? In the previous lecture, we did uh, cover this ayat from Surah Ambiya, which was, uh, we used it to prove that the city is Jerusalem and the people are Gog and Magog who have established the state of Israel. Okay, that's done. But the other one is that is, is it relates to the Sea of Galilee. So this is the River Jordan. It's also called Lake Tiberias. It's in Palestine and it's under the control of the Israeli government. And the water level of the Sea of Galilee can be taken as a parameter to judge are we living in the world order of Gog and Magog. So when the first of them actually passes by this river, there's going to be water there good amounts of water. And when the last wave walks across this river, they're going to say there was once water there. And what you can do is just Google this and you're going to see that the water level of the Sea of Galilee has reached its lowest. All we'll have to do is just ask the question, who's using up that water? And that is uh, the Israeli population that's using that water and that proves that we are in the world order of Gog and Magog.